Well, it looks like the bankers are having problems in London. Uh, it looks like another J.P. Morgan. Um, actually, he was not a banker per se. He was in charge of the technical aspect uh, of, you know, whatever the systems were. He uh, jumped to his death from uh, top of toll building. A uh, 39-year-old uh, employee of J.P. Morgan died after falling from the roof of the European headquarters of J.P. Morgan in London. And there's been a number of deaths going on. Uh, you know, I shouldn't make light of this, but uh, if they're under all this high stress, they should be looking at some of my videos about uh, raising the ketones in the brain with uh, coconut oil and uh, taking a niacin, using an electronic uh, bio-tuner and all that other wonderful stuff. But who knows if that would work or not. But, uh, you know, maybe there's problems deeper than just high-stress situations, too. Maybe they know something's coming up. But I don't know, if I knew something was coming up, hey, I'd be like, hey, I'm out of here, man, you know. Actually, if I was Snowden, I, you know, I joked about going, you know, remember Eric Snowden, he ratted out the NSA and all that, which is fine, you know, it's just fine. Thou shalt not spy on Americans, but, you know, when you go to, I don't know, I'm going to ad-lib on this, but, you know, when you go over to Russia, they spy on everybody else over there, too. And, you know, but where is he going to go to? I said an Indian reservation, but I would have been in uh, biker land, man. I would have been incognito in biker land, you know. That's what I would have been doing. Anyway, for as long as I can last, but I wouldn't have left the United States. That's just how I am. Anyway, um, but, you know, it looks like there's been a lot of problems out there going on because, uh, you know, this is not one incident where one person jumped off the roof. You know, there's been a lot of things been going on race lately. Uh, you know, there's been talk about global re regulators needing more policy tools to counter the risk of devastating bank runs. Should be, you know, should it happen again? Because actually, you know, we, the last time there was the financial crisis, a lot of people don't realize this, but actually the depth of the financial crisis was actually 20, September 28th, 2009. There was an electronic, basically, an electronic run on the money markets and they had infused money into the system at the last minute. Now, I got this word from somebody who is uh, not on the internet, who's, uh, you know, actually runs uh, an investment firm, okay? Well, he's the head of the whole division in this whole southeast area or something. And, you know, I talked to him one time when I was at this social function, he told me this type of stuff, you know. And, um, you know, actually, I confirmed it by reading it on the internet, too. But, you know, that's what can possibly happen of electronic bank run. And, you know, they're looking for tools that can actually, you know, shore up things. Uh, you know, I've noticed that the Chinese have also uh, raised their um, their interest rates for the depositors. Because, you know, it looks like not that many months ago they had some problems, too, with some, some type of bank runs and th also. Now, as far as why did the metals dip today? You know, this has always been the age-old question in my mind. You know, it should have also made the stock market dip, too. But... You know, why did the metals dip today? It probably was because of the durable goods report that came out that was very, very weak. You know, orders for durable goods. That's basically like capital goods that are used for the production of goods and services and manufacturing and that type of stuff. Basically, they were a lot lower than expected. So they had, um, they expected that there was going to be this, you know, this is another thing, the Obama administration what is expiring uh, tax credits. This guy, you know, I mentioned something before about, you know, when they had, um, with the home sales, basically, if you have to walk away from your home. You see, this guy is really killing business, man. I don't know what the deal is. I mean, you know, he's, he basically is almost like he's making his own laws, practically, or the elite is making her own laws with this guy. Because... You know, I mentioned something before about, like, say, for instance, you walk away from a home and, you know, the home price, the fair market value is now $50,000, but when you bought it, it was $190,000 and you had a loan on it, you know, 80% loan or something, say, I don't know, whatever that is, $165,000, and you still owed uh, $150,000 principal and it's on the books for fit, you know, now the fair market value is fifty thousand. So what happens between you know the one hundred fifty that the loan is that's on the bank's books, and they take back the assets fifty thousand? 
they they say that that's income to the I don't know if I'm confusing people I'm gonna to point to a link on that video um, they say that that's income to the homeowner and they get a 1099 miscellaneous right I probably confuse people on this well they had a forgiveness clause up in there you know before that where you didn't have to recognize it as income but Obama has let that sunset as of uh, I think it was January 1st, 2014, or December 31st, 2013. So it's done. It's done, right? This is the other type of thing he's doing, too, because they had all these tax credits in place, and they're expiring in 2014. And, you know, this was another reason they expected that the, um, you know, the durable goods orders would come in stronger at the end of the year because of the new expiring tax credits and they did not you know which I'm thinking holy shit you know why would you be expiring these tax credits like right now you know I mean the economy's not recovered right now I mean tax credits for buying durable goods good durable goods which means you're gonna make more products and hire more people and get production for of goods and services that people need because you know, I mean, crying out loud, this guy's a, he's a communist. What the hell can I tell you, man? And, you know, I should actually interject something even about communism. There's one little tiny aspect of what Karl Marx said. That that's a fatal flaw of capitalism. You know, it should be, it works, oh, it, capitalism works fine when it's laissez-faire capitalism. But when you got crony capitalism, which is what we got going on, where it's basically protecting the most, you know, the largest, the two bigs to fail, you know, the largest banks, the largest corporations and stuff like that, and the tax and, you know, incentives are for the ultra, ultra wealthy. Um, what happens is, is there's a transfer of wealth from all the bottom classes to the top class, and it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going until you have a revolution. And that's something Karl Marx said. That's one tiny aspect that that guy actually had right, even though 99% of the crap he said is wrong. But, you know, there's always a little some side to something that actually is correct. And, you know, that's kind of what's going on. But the problem is we don't have the right type of capitalism in the United States. But anyway, that is, you know, in a brief sentence, you know, <laughs> if I was brief on this, why silver, gold, you know, it shouldn't even be why gold, but why industrial metals were, metals were hit. And actually, it's not, you know, it's actually like copper was hit. Because, you know, the durable goods outlook has, it's went down. They had a lot less orders than expected. They said it was a very, very weak report. Oh, well. And, you know, it's a weak report in lieu of them expiring the tax credit for durable goods. You know, another thing this guy's doing, it's not going to help the economy. You know, that's, that's funny because I'm mentioning that's here about the expiring tax credit of, you know, for purchasing durable goods, which, you know, in other words, you get a tax credit for, you know, I forgot what the hell it is, but it's a tax credit for buying durable goods. In other words, durable goods are capital expenditures, which means you buy this machine that, you know, or whatever equipment that could produce more product. So in other words, you know, it's like real manufacturing, real stuff that people need, not fluff. You know, not banker salaries or incentives and bonuses that they include in the GDP and all that other garbage. Real stuff. So, you know, if the government's going to give somebody a break, you know, you want to give it to the people that are actually going to be the real, real producers in America. So that tax credit is going away in 2014. The guy's ridiculous, man. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, you talk about, you know, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody that's one of these... You know, I don't even know what these guys say, but I bet you they don't mention stuff like that. You know, the silver pumpers and the block, you know, gold bloggers and all that kind of crap and the conspiracy clowns out there. You know, they don't mention shit like that. But I don't know. You know, uh, Obama is a dyed in the wool Karl Marx Marxist, and you know the problem is, you know, like I said, there's there is a a tiny sliver of truth in some of the stuff that Karl Marx even says. I mean, I'm saying like. You know, just about everything there is, it's almost like it's not 100% one way or whatever. You know, it's, maybe it's like 90-something 90, 90 percent wrong, but there's always a sliver of truth to it. And it's like when you have crony capitalism, which is what we got now, not real laissez-faire capitalism, you know, more and more wealth goes to the top 1%. And, you know, none of those that encourage revolution, because, you know, the people on the bottom are getting squeezed. 
but it also kills productivity because there's no longer a middle class to sell to. You know, that's been China's problem. China had a market because they sold overseas and exported. it. You know, if the market gets dries up because the middle class is getting destroyed in, these, in uh, the Europe and the United States, they're, Europe being their biggest export market, what do they sell to? They have to sell to internally. But, you know, they have to build their middle class. If they build their middle class, they raise their wages. And what happens if they raise their wages? They kill their manufacturing competitiveness. So, you know, nothing's really written in stone, but, you know, when you actually um, transfer so much wealth to the top like that, you actually kill productivity. That is actually one thing that Karl Marx said is that is correct. Not that I'm a fan of his or anything, but you understand. There is some aspects to some of this stuff. But, you know, one the wealth doesn't get transferred to the 1% in an actually true competitive business environment that is free of, you know, crony capitalism and regulation that's designed to, stimu to uh, stifle the middle class entrepreneur. You know, it's like when you have regulations in place to keep the established, you know, people in power, that's when you have, you know, more wealth going to the 1%. So it's not capitalism per se that's the problem. It's a particular type of capitalism that works together with the government. And that's usually what the problem is, is that we have the elite on Wall Street calling the shots in the government. And we, the people, are have not been exercising our voice because we say, oh, we don't vote because, uh, you know, it's all rigged. And, you know, hey, I vote for third parties if I'm disgusted with the other two. That's what I do. But anyway, it looks like the Treasury's, um, you know, they're up to 2.7%. You know, I know they've been over 3% on a tenure. But, um, you know, all it has to do is tick up another percent past this. Past the 3%, some 3.1%, some say it gets up to 4% or 5% or whatever. And, you know, they've been raising interest rates on Chinese depositors. If that happens, a lot of money is going to go out of the freaking stock market. It's just going to pour out. And then it's going to nosedive. Now, people have been asking me that, do I think that metals, you know, well, let me put it this way. I'm so bullish on metals. I, I'm, and my, my opinion's tainted. But it depends on... Do I think if do metals will metals get knocked down also with the stock market if the when the stock market corrects? The short answer is yes, but the the one and the most important uh, answer you want to know is how much will they get knocked down? You know, it could very well be that we're past the absolute low already in the metals, and you know if you look historically, the metals made their absolute low first. And then the S&P made the absolute low, their absolute low. And when they made the absolute low, the S&P made the absolute low at that time, it pulled down the metals, but it didn't pull the metals down to the absolute low they had just some months prior to that. So we may be past the absolute low in gold because we had a double bottom. You know, that's kind of like, you know, I don't have it like a total crystal ball, but I think that may be the case. Now, the other thing is, if the trigger, this is very, very important, because this is what I've been saying all along, too. If the trigger for the stock market to really correct, I mean, it corrected a few hundred points, it corrected quite a bit last week. It was the largest correction in so many days since 2012 or something like that. It was, it was in a while. But if the real trigger turns out to be um, because of a, the full faith and credit of the U.S. government coming into question, that will actually make gold go up at that time while the market goes down. It depends on what the perceived reason for the crash is. You know, I'm assuming, I think it is a very good assumption that the stock market will correct. Now, you know, I notice when people are saying that stocks will go to 20,000, that may be true too, but first there will be a correction. My, my theory is, or I don't know if you want to call it, I'm going to use a common sense, is that, you know, the stock markets are too pricey right now. The PE races are too high. We had the six Hindenburg omens and stuff like that. I know Soros had been saying all along, he's got the S&P 
bearish bet, huge bearish bet. And, you know, I think they'll correct. And when they do, that's going to spur them to do, you reverse their total decision on taper, and they're going to go to QE, to new heights, to bring up everything again. And maybe then that's when they'll start doing a charge. I don't know what they're going to correct you. But I think what's reasonable would be the 30 to 40 percent, or maybe it's a 30 to 50 percent correction would be more reasonable. I don't know about 50 percent. That might be too much. See, in today's environment, that like when they had in the 30s in 1932, they had like a 90 percent correction. Um, you know, they would step in and today with today's tools that they have, they would step in and they would stop it. It may be the 30 to 40 percent correction, but if they fix it. You know, when I'm talking, I use the word fix it. It's like a Band-Aid. You know, it's like, you know, they put STP in the engine so it doesn't blow up or they change one of the bearings. But, you know, the whole system needs an overhaul. You know, if they fix it temporarily or they forestall the problems again, um, it's not going to, you know, it's going to be with lots of QE and stimulus, which eventually is going to go into the metals. But if it's also, like I said, if the stock market drops due to them having problems because of it and they also talk about debt downgrades in the USA oh, the precious metals are going to do great I mean the stocks will be going up down and the metals will be going up that's what will be happening that's exactly what's going to be happening you know I have to also look at you know historically um, you know some people ask me about palladium but you know it, it was in 2011 during August of 2011 that you know I think Earlier in 2011, Palladium made a high of like 870. Then it retracted some when um, the silver and gold went down. And then they had the problem with the debt, debt downgrade. You know, the S&P debt downgraded the U.S. debt slightly um, at, in August 2011. Gold skyrocketed to over 1900, and Palladium actually went up to 850. You know, even though it's an industrial metal, 90% is industrial use. You know, it kind of wears a dual hat too. So and silver was over forty bucks, you know. So, you know, even though those aren't the exact types of metals as like gold is, you know, they're, especially palladium is far more industrial use. If the reason for the stock market to tumble is due to a debt downgrade in the United States, um, that should make the precious metals do well, especially gold. But even palladium will probably take a little bit, a little bit of a jump, not a lot. So they won't get clobbered. What the commodity that may get clobbered might be oil. But we got something coming out of left field, which is possibly tensions in the Middle East again, with um, you know Israel talking about building the third temple. If you heard that, you know. So if, if they build the third temple, we got war in the Middle East, and if we got war in the Middle East, oil is going to go through the roof. But uh, you know, what I'm looking for very soon is where I think the crisis is going to really start. It's going to be, like I've been saying all along since October, when I thought it was going to start happening in October, is over the budget issues. They're not going to iron those out too easily. So, um, you know, that's actually going to be bullish for gold. But for today, you know, what happened? Why did gold, silver, and all this crap go down? You know, because, you know, the things that people are interested in. It's because of the durable goods orders. You're thinking, what the hell does gold have to do with the durable goods orders? Because that makes makes the main it makes the outlook for the U.S. economy look bad. You know, especially in a one real. You know, this is the sector I look at. You know, I don't look at the GDP, which is actually pumped up by U.S. government spending, which is actually spending that is based upon debt. You know, I'm looking at. You know, I would be looking more at durable goods and manufacturing. And yeah, by the way, I mentioned yesterday about 3D printers. Uh, as a, an investment later, I'm talking later on, I'm saying like maybe in 2017, if silver actually does hit these astronomical heights of several hundred dollars an ounce, the technology for 3D printers may be very good, and if you're an entrepreneur, you're one of these uh, types of people that, um, they might be a lot much more improved in a few years. Not right now, but in a few years. Uh, you might want to invest in that. You know, and the other thing is, um, that's probably going to encourage uh, more domestic manufacturing in the long run because if the commodity prices are very high, 
that's going to mean that the oil prices are also very high at the time, say 2017, which is also going to mean that the transportation prices are very high. And if you can actually, um, if somebody can actually manufacture goods locally, with you know maybe it's maybe it's going to require a twenty or thirty thousand um, dollar high quality three D printer that can do the job accurate enough with very little machining afterwards to produce parts in the United States. Um, it would actually um, cut back a lot on the imports coming from China because you know to actually have them produce goods in China and then ship them across the world there's a large there's a transportation tag on that if oil prices are high at that time in 2017 we might have a way a work around on that where we could still have cheap durable goods in the United States produced locally and the 3D printing might be you know the way out might be the way out you know technology and innovation can overcome um, you know the problems in the financial world they can like I said the real problem is it's not just the parasites and leeches we have in, in Wall Street but we got a lot of parasites and leeches in a lot of strata in society overall and you know it's only going to be the ones that are going to survive are going to be the ones that roll up their sleeves and work so just want to leave you with that and uh, you know versus the sky is falling because uh, yeah, just keep your head down and keep working that's basically what the deal is and uh, you know just for your information as to why silver and gold and all that stuff went down today it was the durable goods orders um, which was surprising because they should have been higher because of the expected well not the expected because of the you know the true factual expiration of the tax credits that were expiring on in, in 2014 for capital purchases of goods so that tells you a lot about this administration man are they trying to freaking uh, make more business in the United States hell no no not at all man and I'm being very serious about that not political I'm being very serious and factual about that bad news man bad news